In times of trouble, I often think about Raymond Carver's short story, "A Small Good Thing." In the short story, Carver describes a couple whose son was going to celebrate his birthday, but right before the birthday celebration, the son had a car accident and ended up being in a hospital. Then later, he passed away. As a result of this accident, the couple wasn't able to pick up the birthday cake they had ordered from a baker for the celebration. And the baker, having no idea about what had taken place, began to harass the couple on the phone. So finally, when the couple realized this after the death of their son, they went to confront the baker. And it was during this confrontation that a beautiful moment happened. The baker realized how he had wronged the couple, and offered to feed the couple. This whole story is really about how, in times of trouble, we can use something so fundamental like eating to reconnect with each other. Today, I'm going to read to you an excerpt from this wonderful story. This is at the very end of the story, and I highly encourage you to seek out the whole story so that you can read it in its entirety. I have read the story many, many times, and I always find it comforting, even though the story is really very sad. The baker put the rolling pin back on the counter. He undid his apron and threw it on the counter. He looked at them, and then he shook his head slowly. He pulled a chair out from under the card table that held papers and receipts, an adding machine, and a telephone directory. Please sit down, he said. Let me get you a chair, he said to Howard. Sit down, please. The baker went into the front of the shop and returned with two little wrought iron chairs. Please sit down, you people. Anne wiped her eyes and looked at the baker. I wanted to kill you," she said. "I wanted you dead." The baker had cleared a space for them at the table. He shoved the adding machine to one side, along with the stacks of notepaper and receipts. He pushed the telephone directory onto the floor, where it landed with a thud. Howard and Anne sat down and pulled their chairs up to the table. The baker sat down too. "Let me say how sorry I am." The baker said, pulling his elbows on the table. "God alone knows how sorry. Listen to me. I'm just a baker. I don't claim to be anything else. Maybe once, maybe years ago, I was a different kind of human being. I've forgotten. I don't know for sure. But I'm not any longer. If I ever was, now I'm just a baker. That don't excuse my doing what I did. I know." But I'm deeply sorry. I'm sorry for your son, and sorry for my part in this. The baker said. He spread his hands out on the table and turned them over to reveal his palms. I don't have any children myself, so I can only imagine what you must be feeling. All I can say to you now is that I'm sorry. Forgive me if you can. The baker said. I'm not an evil man. I don't think not evil like you said on the phone. You got to understand what it comes down to. Is I don't know how to act any more. It would seem. Please, the man said, let me ask you if you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. It was warm inside the bakery. Howard stood up from the table and took off his coat. He helped Anne from her coat. The baker looked at them for a minute, and then nodded and got up from the table. He went to the oven and turned off some switches. He found cups and poured coffee from an electric coffee maker. He put a carton of cream on the table and a bowl of sugar. You probably need to eat something, the baker said. I hope you'll eat some of my hot rolls. You have to eat and keep going. Eating is a small good thing in times like this, he said. He served them warm cinnamon rolls just out of the oven. The icing still runny. He put butter on the table and knives to spread the butter. Then the baker sat down at the table with them. He waited. He waited until they each took a roll from the platter and began to eat. It's good to eat something, he said, watching them. There's more. 
eat up, eat all you want. There's all the roles in the world in here. They ate rolls and drank coffee. Anne was suddenly hungry, and the rolls were warm and sweet. She ate three of them, which pleased the baker. Then he began to talk. They listened carefully. Although they were tired and in anguish, they listened to what the baker had to say. They nodded when the baker began to speak of loneliness and the sense of doubt and limitation that had come to him in his middle years. He told them what it was like to be childless all these years, to repeat the days with ovens endlessly full and endlessly empty. The party food, the celebrations he'd worked over, icing knuckle deep. The tiny wedding couples stuck into cakes, hundreds of them, no thousands by now. Birthdays, just imagine all those candles burning. He had a necessary trait. He was a baker. He was glad he wasn't a florist. It was better to be feeding people. This was a better smell any time than flowers.